It's about quarter past three on Friday afternoon, September 13th. And um, I'm about to head out to the canoe and campsites at Pilot Mountain State Park. My buddy Steve and his son Cameron are also heading that way this evening. We're gonna, um, we're taking our kayaks with us. We're gonna actually hike down to these paddling sites, um, set up camp tonight and just chill. And then um, tomorrow we're gonna do some shuttling of cars and kayaks and uh, head up to the Yadkin Shores access um, and paddle back down to the Shoals access, which is just down the road from from where we're camping. And um, it's about a 17 mile stretch. So we got a pretty long paddle tomorrow. Um, and then Sunday, we're gonna kinda see how we feel tomorrow night. We may end up doing um, six miles down to the Donaha. I guess that's how you pronounce it, Donaha access or if we really feel pretty good we might go on down to the old 421 access which is a I think about 13 miles total with a portage along the way um we'll see about that tomorrow night we uh steve and i my buddy we did the um stretch from crater park and elkin down to yadkin shores a couple weekends ago so we're just kind of picking up where we left off and i guess the mst organization considers that stretch from Elkin down to um, Shoals officially part of the MST uh, the paddle park so we're going to finish up that stretch and have that uh, those miles of the MST done but anyway I'm going to head on and I'll check in with you guys later so I just got to the uh, the Shoals Road trailhead access or I guess it's the Ivy Bluffs trailhead here but uh, there's about a half mile or so hike down to the paddling campsite you can actually take the trail which is about a mile or so I think um, but anyway um, we're just taking the Forest Service road down um, it's a lot faster um, so I'm gonna start loading up here in a minute show you a quick little tour of the site here we are a little reference point make sure you know where you're supposed to be when you get here if you ever come over here um pretty good sized parking area one bathroom and some trash cans over that way and i'm kind of looking back towards the um the entrance so just kind of like kind of like a little lollipop here um, entrance. Um, I guess you could park here in this middle section too, which is nice. So you can pretty much park on the other side. Not as much space on the grass over there. You can park over here, park there, and then there's this whole area over here where I'm, where I am, and it kind of widens as you get further towards my car. So, really nice trailhead. So just starting to walk down towards the campsite. Got a bunch of gear, a backpack, um, and a wagon full of stuff. Uh, but one trip hopefully is all I'm gonna need. Like I've seen before, so the Ivy Bluffs Trail I think is just down this way a little bit to the left and this Forest Service Road. Um, just goes down directly towards the campsites. Uh, I think the Rangers use it. I'm pretty sure the Rangers use it because we saw one down there last time. We were here. Anyway, catch you later. So here's the entrance to the uh, the two canoe and campsites. Looking back this way is the the Forest Service Road that I came down. Bear right over here. We got two sites. So we're in the first one. Last time we were here, we were in the far one. And if I remember correctly, the Ivy Bluff Trail comes through here. Basically, it comes. It kind of goes by the river, loops around, comes through here, and then you basically, I think, you follow it 
all the way through the campsites and it continues on the other side. I think this trail, this trail right here, I think just goes down to the river. I don't really think it's part of the Ivy Bluff Trail, although it may be. We didn't walk this far last time. Now I'm gonna go over and scout out some hammock sites. So there's our campsite and just across uh, on the right side of the tent pads here. There's a nice open area for hammocking. The last time we were here, there was a father and daughter uh, down here camping and they had a hammock set up, I think, between these two trees, which are probably the two that I'm going to use. Um, seems just about right. I think Steve could probably go. There's a couple of trees here. He might be able to go kind of at an angle or maybe go to that. I'm not pointing the right direction, but basically go to that tree. I'm going to use that tree. I might be able to share this one here as a kind of a common tree. But anyway, let's get the show on the road. All right. So there's Steve off in the distance. I'm not sure what he's doing. Just probably just get some steps in this morning. His son Cameron's in this tent right here. And then we have our camp set up over here. There's Steve's hammock over there. And I'm kind of right here. Back up a little bit so you can see. Um, slept pretty well last night. A little bit of rain, uh, but not too much. Um, and then there's our little picnic table and what all our other stuff we're going to need for breakfast. And then, may have showed you guys this last night, there's a, uh, there's a bathroom right here, which is really nice. Nice clean bathroom, actually. Do a good job. And that's the other campsite. And uh, last time we were here, there was no firewood, but uh, someone's been very generous and chopped up firewood for both sides. I used some of it last night. Anyway, I'm going to catch you guys when we get back uh, near the river. Later. We are at Yadkin Shoals uh, access point on the Yadkin River, as you can see down there. I'm waiting for the shuttle to come back so we can get to paddling. Um, this is actually a takeout point uh, if you're doing the paddle trail. And you can actually camp here. Now, there's no facilities. Uh, it's just really just a wildlife ramp. But... It's not a bad place. It's got has a flat, a couple flat places to stay. Um, you're not terribly far from Boonville, which I'll show you which way that is. Just come down here. We're starting to get a little bit of color, just a little bit of the fall colors, which are supposed to be muted this year. The forecast was not very good for. A vibrant autumn but still an early fall late summer there's the bridge that goes to Boonville putting in here got some jewelweed right there which means there's poison ivy right there too jewelweed is the counter uh, I guess the counter uh, chemical to the poison ivy, the earth oil, oil, I can never say it, earth oil, oil, it's the thing that makes you itch. And jewelweed, if you crush it up, the flower, the stem, make it like a poultice, it will take the itch away and take the inflammation away. So there's your little botany lesson for the day. A little bit that I know of botany, just very little. All right, back up here. We're going to get the show on the road soon. We will see you on the river.
we've already seen some cows in the river. There's more here. I'm not sure if you guys can see it that well. I'm having a hard time seeing it through my camera here, but hopefully it'll come out pretty well. Pretty cool. bend it's kind of an interesting day it's been kind of overcast most of the day but the sun's been peeking out every now and then so that kind of that juxtaposition there kind of describes the way the day is like dark clouds or gray clouds and the sun blue blue skies behind it so i think it's supposed to clear up as the day goes along anyway we're going to take a break here at rockford and get back on miles in. There's seven to go down to Shoals. Not sure if you can see those guys very well. I'm trying to get it to focus on them, but I think it's more focused on my boat. But anyway, the gray clouds have pretty much disappeared and it's been counting mostly sunny few clouds here and there which has made it somewhat nice nice breeze pretty day So with beautiful skies above and Pilot Mountain in the distance, we paddled the last several miles to the Shoals access. We got back later than planned, so by the time we retrieved the cards, we left at Yak and Shores and loaded up the kayaks. It was almost dark by the time we got back down to the campsite. My wife Meredith and our dog Luna had driven up to join us for the night and were anxiously awaiting our arrival. Once we got their tents set up, Hammer and Steve whipped up a tasty batch of tacos that really hit the spot. We had some fun conversation and just chilled by the fire before calling it a night. When we awoke on Sunday morning, it was a bit misty and there was rain in the forecast, so we just decided to pack up camp and come back another time when the weather was a bit nicer. Lastly, I'd like to give a big shout out to Ward Swan from YatkinRiverKeeper.org who provided excellent feedback on river conditions, trip logistics, 
and many other useful tidbits. Thanks a bunch, Ward. We'll be back soon enough to paddle the Shoals area and continue our trek down the mighty Yadkin.